Aero Superbikes. I'm fed up with them. For several reasons, which we'll go into, they just don't suit my riding anymore. So I've ditched them for something with a little bit more panache. I'm introducing to the channel my custom 1992 Massey Mega Team Race road bike. It's steel, it's rim brake, and I love it. But why have I made the change? Well, the catalyst for the change was a pretty unfortunate event, bike theft. My previous long-term race bike, the Factor 02, was stolen from my garage around two years ago, and it left me not only without a road bike, but with a pretty big hole in my wallet too. When I looked to replace the bike though, my riding had totally changed. No longer was I racing full-time, and no longer was I looking for every last watt in a competitive environment. With that in mind, I began a search for a bike that I could truly fall in love with. After deciding I wanted something a little bit different, I began trawling the likes of eBay, online forums, and eventually I found this gorgeous frame set for the modest price of just 208 quid. With no clue whether the 53 frame set would fit me or what parts I was going to put on it, I bought it. And when it turned up at my house, the condition was better than I could ever believed. It was brilliant. For a while, the bike did sit on my desk as I had no parts to build it with, but after a month or so, fortune changed for the better. I managed to acquire a full Altegra 6800 group set from of all places, the tip. By chance, I met a man throwing away his crash damaged Willy road bike, so I had to ask if I could take it off his hands. He was more than happy to see the parts go to some use as he'd already upgraded to a new bike courtesy of his insurance company. The wheels too, it's fair to say, were a stroke of luck. For the price of a lead out on the chain gang and a couple of pints, I acquired these 45 mm fast forward carbon wheels from a friend who, once again, having switched to disc brakes, had no use for the wheels. He's pretty sure they're from 2013, I'm not sure on the exact model. The tires they're shod with are much more modern, Continental GP 5000s in a now fairly retro 25 mm width. Finishing kit two was done pretty much on the cheap where possible. Handlebars were from a scrap 80s steel road bike and Bontrager bar tape was about the cheapest I could find. I did spend out on a Dada Murex quill stem simply for the aesthetic and I'm glad I did. It's sleek and the lines I think work really well with the retro look of the build. What isn't so aesthetically pleasing though is I know the saddle. I'm sure I'll get some stick for this in the comments, but I've been with the ISM PN 3.0 for four years now, and I just get on with it. For the sake of this build though, I wish I didn't, but I don't go sprinting around as much as I used to these days. So for the most part, it remains hidden, probably for the best. Now, I know what you'll all be wondering, what does this bike weigh? It's not light, 9.5 kilograms to be exact, but stay with me, this bike is about more than just statistics, and in any case, it cost me a fraction of the price of a modern superbike. Thanks in no small part to the free group set and wheel set, this bike owes me just £450, which I think for a bike in this condition is an impressive price. Eagle-eyed viewers and vintage enthusiasts may have noticed that this is a Massey, that's spelt with two S's. The significance of this is the quality of the frame set. Frames by Falerio Massi with one S were very sought after, with the Italian frame builder making renowned race bikes and nice examples actually still fetch over a thousand pounds on the second-hand market. My frame set is from Spanish brand Massi, who are still around today. The frame set is made from high quality Columbus brain butted tubing and features triangulated sections at the rear chainstays for added stiffness. It's not a lugged frame, being slightly newer it features standard steel welds instead. But as you can expect, retrofitting an 11 speed group set with modern STI levers wasn't without its pitfalls. For the most part it was actually easier than expected. I was able to install a braze on front mech and an 11 speed rear mech with no issues and with some careful limit screw adjustment I've had few issues with gear changes even with a square taper bottom bracket and chain set. Shifters on the other hand were slightly more problematic. It turns out when Shimano designed the Altegra 6800 group set in 2013 they didn't really consider its use on 26.8mm vintage handlebars. That means the shifters don't clamp tightly enough around the handlebars, but I found a creative solution in the form of a Coke can. 
To fit the shifters, I actually shredded two Coke cans into long, thin sections and coated them in carbon fiber grit paste. These were then rolled up around the handlebars to create some pretty bodgy shims. Not something we'd recommend doing, but I will note I keep a pretty keen eye on them to make sure they're safe. And for now at least, I'm still here. So how does the bike ride? Are aero bikes a myth? Is it all marketing BS? Absolutely not. This bike is not fast by any means. External cable routing, old school tube profiles, and a nine and a half kilo weight are to blame for that. But riding is about more than just chasing average speed for me these days. That said, it is an important point. I've ridden both super bikes and my Massey around a given test loop, and the speed differential seems to be around about three kilometers per hour. That's based on a 30 kilometer an hour riding pace though this isn't power meter verified, so bear that in mind. But what the Massey lacks in outright speed is more than made up for by the bike's handling and comfort. Steel has long been hailed for its vibration dampening qualities, and it's no different here. In fact, despite just fitting 25 mm tires, it's unbelievably compliant, even on my far less than perfect Oxfordshire home roads. It corners brilliantly too. The handling is a little bit slower than bikes on the market today, but the low feel from the traditional handlebar drop is something I've actually really warmed to. Then there's the aesthetic. Pretty much every ride I do now will feature a cafe at some point. And the truth is, I just like how this bike looks up against the fence when I'm drinking my coffee. It's a little bit different, and it sort of sits as a modest protest against internal cable routing and 15,000 pound bikes. And to be honest, I like that. The biggest downgrade, however, for me, is the rim brakes. Just the other day, I was out on a pretty wet ride here in the UK, and I was reminded of just how long it takes to stop on carbon wheels in the wet. That said though, the pads are cheap, and a fresh set of external cables are far easier to service than brake bleeds, so for me, it's a small price to pay. But this bike does what any bike should. It makes me want to get out the door and ride, and I look forward to putting many more miles on this trusty steed in the next year and beyond. So there you have it, my long-term steed. It's not new, it's not fast, and in a lot of cases, it's not even practical either, but I love it.